Hey, hey, what's up? All right, so I'm about to get back on the pool and finishing some things up with that for a little bit. All that's kind of coming up and, oh yeah, Jackery solar generator. So uh, you guys probably seen you know, there's different brands, different stuff that does different things in result is to high portable power. And I've used some other ones and you see people push a bunch of them with camping, stuff like that, which is great. But a real good use is when you're building a house, you're doing outside construction projects, that kind of deal. But you need something with a lot of juice. So I've been looking for that because around here, like we're getting ready to start building a couple of houses, you can't get power on a new house build a lot of times until you're closer to getting your certificate of occupancy. So people are having to build the houses off of generators, like the one in Mevin. We started with a generator. We blew through like $300 in fuel in a week. So that's ridiculous. So this would be a great use for that. So we're going to showcase this some and uh, go over all the things about this because this is what makes this a better solution than maybe some other ones you've seen. So, All right, I'm back. If you've uh, been keeping up with the shorts, you probably saw that we had a bunch of massive storms. In fact, we've got more coming, but uh, we actually have a clear sunny day for now. So I'm gonna get back to testing out the solar generator system from Jackery and uh, we're gonna see what it can do. All right, so if you order the complete kit, then you should expect to receive four boxes and a plug. So I'm gonna go over what each one of these is, what they do, and then we're gonna put it to the test. There you go. So inside the brown boxes were some uh, beautiful bright orange boxes. So you've seen this type of deal before. You got your main unit, which you can buy just this. So you got the main unit, have all your usual hookups, you can hook up USB, USB-C, got your regular 120 outlets. You've got the big output one for one, the big 120 one, which will go to the transfer switch, or you could plug your camper directly into it. And then this is an extra battery pack, transfer switch. So if you have an area and you're wanting to use this as backup all the time, then, you know, it is a manual transfer switch, but you got on generator, on line voltage, and your breakers. Comes with a handy dandy plug, which will wire up, and then this will wire to this and to your regular box. And then, of course, you need solar panels to charge it all. So, cool thing about this is one time expense instead of having to constantly put diesel fuel or gasoline or um, natural gas you know whatever your fuel source is for a backup generator you just got this let's get it the rest of the way unboxed and get the solar panels hooked up get it charging and then uh once we've got a full charge we're gonna uh let's say we'll put it to the test see what we got all right so it cut right on Came out of the box 29%. So you do have the option to charge it up off of you know, your grid. So you charge it off the grid at night or whenever power's the cheapest, and then you can use it during peak times. Plug that in right at the top. Then the other end charging once you get that going it's time to get your phone out where is my phone all right it's time to get your phone out and it tells you how to use the app search for jackery in the apple store all right you find it get it's going to download that i'm sure you need to turn on either wi-fi or bluetooth so i'm going to turn both on Actually, Wi-Fi was already on. Turn my Bluetooth on. Create an account. Check that you've read the agreement. Then you get a verification code to your email. Put that in. Then you create a password. 
hit OK. <laughs> All right, add a device, Bluetooth configuration mode. Let's make sure it's still flashing. It was. All right. So, based on what I'm seeing, you would want to have the app already downloaded before you ever powered it on. Probably says that in instructions. You know, I'm usually impatient. So, I'm, it's okay. I'm just going to unplug it. And it's flashing to discover the device. So that's what it was. Popped right up. And let's connect Wi Fi. Why not? Okay. So I don't have Wi Fi out here where I'm at right yet. But if you did, you could put it on your Wi Fi network and it would communicate that way as well. Looks like it's got a lot going on. 29 degrees Celsius. It's a little warm, you guys. They're on, uh, know what Celsius is, you know that's hot. All right, so that's plugged in and charging. Now let's add the expansion module. All right, so we got this hooked up. It's charging off the grid right now. I've got both plugged in, but it will sense that we have enough sunlight and solar input to charge it. And then if for some reason we get a lot of cloud cover, storm, whatever, it'll switch. And if it needs to charge it off the grid. Now we're going to take out the expansion pack here. Oh, I see. Aha, it's got this big cable to connect it to the main unit. That is heavy duty. Okay, all right, that just sits on top of there. I'm going to ask them how many you can add, and I guess we'll find out because if there's, see how you can do an input, but then you can do another one. So you can cascade these. You can also have cascading solar panels. You could have two solar, two of these solar panel arrays plugged into the bottom unit, two into the next unit and so on. A to B. I set it on here somewhere, I just saw it. B. So, ah, see how easy it is? Either read the instructions or learn from somebody like me that doesn't read instructions and see what I did wrong and then all you gotta do is watch the video and do it right so that's done it's at 32% also and is automatically charging up so we're gonna let this charge to 100% so I can do a fair test on it it is 10:50 a.m. I will check on it occasionally and we'll see how long it takes to get to 100% all right, so I did not get to finish anything yesterday because surprise, surprise, big thunderstorms rolled in again. We got almost three inches in this one and I have not ridden back here yet. So let's see what everything's looking like. The emergency spillway has not had to been used. You see it's, uh, it's backed up a little bit on it. The dock is uh, touching the water. That's not bad. I bet it was rough last night. Though. That's, we've definitely seen it fuller than that. This is one of the two inlets that feeds the pond. If you're new to the channel, we get about 125 acres of runoff feeds this. And uh, this eventually gets to where the little pond is in the front. You see, uh, we got pretty flooded through here. I wasn't here, down here this morning, but James said it was up over the rocks at the end. So, which looks about right. Looks like we got, probably came out to about here. I don't know if I'll be able to see it. Sounds like we got a little bit of waterfall action in there somewhere. Yeah, so originally when we bought the property, we wanted to put the pond starting like over here and coming down to about 
in this area and we did some walking around with the uh, Army Corps engineers and stuff and this is like a wetlands area so we weren't able to put it here which is fine I mean, it worked out good we got buffer to the front and everything but left it alone yeah the chickens are usually not uh, out here up sitting up like that so uh, they're trying to avoid it so the duck house was underwater you can see the seaweed well not seaweed but the um, I know I know check on them what's up goose <laughs> hey You can sleep. Then nobody tell you to get up. Oh, nice, 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 real nice. Yep, looks like they tried to barricade y'all's inlet up over there. What do you think about that? All right, so I have to get this mess cleared. I know. What's up? Oh. What? I'm not trying to recruit your members. <laughs> All right, well, let's go uh, see what the overflow is looking like. All right, so you can see went over the spillway again sometime overnight. And I just cleaned this off yesterday. As a couple people pointed out, it would be, I'd actually have a rake. You know, that's what's kind of hilarious. Like, oh, you need a rake. I've got one. It's at the, up at the uh, other site. And you get to see me go in. All right. Well, might as well clean it off while I'm here. Nice. That was great, wasn't it? All right, so check on that again in a little bit. Oh, there's a bottle. 
think I'll go find that trash rake and uh, clean that off. The algae, that's what the word I was trying to say earlier. So anyway, there you go. That has plenty of water in it. So depending on how things go, this may be the first summer since we did the pond that uh, it doesn't just about dry out. So that'd be kind of nice. All right, I got changed and showered, or showered and changed. So there you go. You can see on the sides how much it poured in uh, during the heavy times. Some nice waterfall sounds going on back in there too. So They've started building, which is good. Not quite as muddy looking coming across here. They actually built a, uh, they brought in a bunch of riprap and put in their own little, uh, what do you call it? Like, looks like they rip wrapped a whole ditch and everything so I'm not sure if they're going to run it into a, their own pond or if they just redirected it but regardless it has the same effect of uh, not washing out not washing a bunch of mud into the lake so that's good and uh, yeah so all right let's go check on the uh, Jackery PC how it fared all right so we just plugged in the refrigerator a fan and a radio. It's at a hundred. Both of these are a hundred percent. So we got a pretty cloudy day, and we're pulling 155 watts to run everything. Then we got the breaker off so that we're not feeding power in from the uh, from the pole. And we're going to see how long this last just leave the breaker off we're gonna find out how long this lasts what time is it it is 10 12 all right it's 10 12 so when james's fan cuts off <laughs> he's gonna look and see what time it is and uh we would have seen uh what we got out of it so that's a i surprised it's only 152 watts to be honest with you so cool and I uh, left it out here in our massive storm because I like to really test things uh, to see how they hold up, not because I'm lazy and forgot. And uh, everything still works, so there you go. All right, we'll see how that goes. All right, it's been a couple hours. Let's check on things. Uh, that one's still 100%. And the battery pack add-on feature is at 78%. And we're pulling 210 10 watts steady. Let me show you what we're doing here. I'm That fan running, not a small fan. Radio, got the fridge over there running. James must have heard I showed up, so he felt like he'd come back to work. Yeah? I done broke too. What's wrong with you? Ain't got nothing to do with me. I just pulled drill bit out and damn it caught. Everything. You be costing me a lot of money. All right, it's the end of the day. We're at 56% and 53%. We ran uh refrigerator fan radio and up there we ran one of those uh four bay dewalt battery chargers off of it too so with no input pretty much because i mean it's just now getting cloud cover kind of dissipate a little bit so uh we feel pretty good about that all right came out here yep as you can see <sighs> another day of just uh rain pouring rain we got two and a half inches of rain overnight, so. As promised, I left this out here to see what we got. So we went down to zero percent overnight as on that one and that one. Okay, good. So they went down to zero percent because obviously it was nighttime and uh, I didn't have anything running into it. I wanted to make sure of uh, how we were. So I'm gonna turn the output back on. Yes, yeah, so you're always running on the battery. 1% on both. All right, so you see that's pretty quick and I am charging it off of the grid right now since, you know, pouring rain. So that'll be a good test. See, uh, see how long that takes too. I said before, I always like to fully, thoroughly check things, not just like a little quick. 
quick thing. I don't want to really know what uh, what we're dealing with. So, yeah, yeah, this is great. So, all right, the last piece of the puzzle is the Reliance Controls manual transfer switch. So, what I've done is I've got that plug set up, and that wires into the breaker box. So this just splits your feed. So you take some circuits that you want to be able to be on the generator and run them through this box. Come over here and see everything's on line, line voltage, okay? All right, so we come in here and got my TV running, got my computer running, getting ready to edit this video. Got the Dazuki running. Oh, let me turn on the light too. There we go. Oh, need to get rid of cobwebs. Got our lights running. So let's go out and let's cut everything over to generator power. All right, so everything's off. I flipped this off of regular power. So now flip us over to generator power ta-da and we'll see what we got ta-da running on the solar generator so so far it's been a great experience everything's worked as it should um, I plan to add some more of the uh, extra battery packs and some more of the solar panels always need juice and this will be a great solution versus run a bunch of generators so hope you've enjoyed the video hope i answered any questions if i didn't post them in the comments below and uh see you next time